Hello, good morning from Israel, and thank you for the organizers of New York Arbitration Week for inviting me to address this esteemed audience. My name is Shai Shovit, and I am a partner at Gurnitsky Law Firm in Tel Aviv, Israel. In addition to my work, I also hold different positions in international arbitration institutions, such as the LCIA, the ICC, UNCITRA, and the Israeli Institute of Commercial Arbitration. I am sorry I was unable to come to New York this year due to other previous commitments, but I have been an enthusiastic supporter of New York Arbitration Week since its inaugural event in 2019, and I hope to be there in person again next week. I was asked to discuss developments and innovations in the Israeli international arbitration world, which has been rapidly growing in the last decade, with the market massively changing and firms large and small focusing more and more on developing their arbitration practice. Israel arbitration laws are outdated. Our main legislative piece relating to arbitration in general, including international arbitration, will soon celebrate its 55th anniversary, and despite a very pro-arbitration judiciary and the common law tradition of the courts, developing the arbitration world through case law and precedents, the arbitration law of 1968 is no longer suitable for purpose. This has made the courts, the landlords, and real owners of the arbitral proceeding. Issues such as arbitrability, appointments of arbitrators, entry measures, and others, which are not thoroughly regulated by the current legislation, were developed and in some aspects even created by the courts in order to adapt the legal framework to the developments in Israel and abroad. However, not all is bad in the current legislation, and one unique and very effective feature of the existing law was a set of default arbitration rules which applies to every arbitration unless the parties opted for another set of rules that would apply, ICC rules, LCAA rules, ICDR rules, etc. This unique feature has saved substantial amounts of legal fees and litigation costs for ad hoc proceedings, and in my humble opinion, should be considered in other jurisdictions as well. But the outdated legislation and its shortcomings have finally led the legislator in Israel to try to amend the current legislation and adopt the UNC Brown Model Law for International Arbitration. The aim of this change is not only to adapt the legislation to the modern international arbitration proceedings, but also to harmonize the arbitration law of Israel with those of the other jurisdictions which have adopted the model law previously and to build on their accumulated experience in applying its provisions. Therefore, in 2021, the Ministry of Justice in Israel published a draft bill for international commercial arbitration, which is anticipated to be discussed and voted on in the coming months once the new government in Israel starts working. The harmonization of the new legislation with other jurisdictions is a key feature of the new draft bill and not only that the Ministry of Justice avoided any changes that might detach the draft bill from the UNCTAD model law, but it specifically enshrined in Section 1E of the draft bill the court's ability to rely on comparative case law in the interpretation of the law, which is again a very unique feature in the Israeli legislation. In addition, since the new draft bill now explicitly regulates such matters as competence, competence, entry measures, independence, and impartiality of arbitrators, and we define its scope of applicability in a more detailed manner. We can expect that the weight for party autonomy and the control over the process would gradually shift from the courts to the parties and the arbitrators. A different question would be whether the courts would actually apply the interpretation provisions in full and move away from old case law, which is, based on, which is based on the current legislation, or would continue to apply the current case law and rely on existing precedents in the application of the law. 
Although this runs the risk of jeopardizing the amortization efforts, it would nevertheless be more user-friendly for the Israeli practitioners and would make the shift to the new regime seamless in their eyes. As can be expected, there are still substantial uncertainties in the adoption of the draft bill and its application, but nevertheless, it would certainly mark a positive shift in Israel which would assist in turning Israel into a regional arbitration hub and a more common seat for international arbitration proceedings. I would like to thank the organizers again for inviting me to deliver this short note and especially to the co-chairs of this year's New York Arbitration Week, Daniel Schimmel and Natalie Reed. Should you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me to my contact details that would appear on screen shortly. Thank you.